All right, and good evening, everybody, or good afternoon, or good morning, or uh, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to the first part of a four series part of Help, I'm Teaching Math. We're gonna explore four different math apps over the next two weeks. Tonight's theme is GeoGebra. And um, whether you've taught math for many years and you wanna learn more about GeoGebra tonight, or whether you're now being asked to teach math and you've never done so in your life and you're freaking out, take a deep breath, rest assured, this workshop is for you. My name is Tim Brzezinski, and I'm excited to be here along with Elizabeth, Steve, and Deidre. Um, this broadcast is brought to you by, uh, sponsored by the Iowa Council of Teachers Mathematics, and Deidre Baker here in the lower right corner is uh, there representing them. Hi, Deidre. Hi, Tim. I am so excited to be here with Steve and Elizabeth. Um, Iowa Council of Teachers of Mathematics is proud to sponsor this uh, four series webinar. Uh, we have enjoyed having Tim at our conferences. I've been into some conferences with Steve. I, I think this is gonna be fabulous. Let's get started. Awesome, and so like I said, if you have questions along the way, throw them in the chat, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, um, they'll be collecting here. Now we cannot answer every single one, right? Especially if there's comments that go off on a tangent. But if uh, Deidre and I see a common theme of questions, we'll definitely maybe interject Steve and Elizabeth saying, hey, this may be a good question to ask, but we're, we're going to try not to interrupt the flow here uh, too much at all. But uh, without any further ado, um, thank you very much. Welcome, Elizabeth, and welcome, Steve. Hello, I am Elizabeth Moslick, and I teach high school at Cedarburg High School in Wisconsin, and this is my 29th year of teaching. So, uh, Steve. Hey, thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, my name is Steve Phelps. Um, I am a math teacher, computer science teacher, and instructional coach at uh, Marymount City Schools just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. And I am in year 30-something, 30 31, 32, so about the same. So I'm glad you guys can join us tonight, and I'm uh, looking forward to this. All right. So... Um, I'm going to start and I would love for you guys who are participating right now to get onto our classroom. Uh, the link is at the bottom of my screen. Um, so that is geogebra.org and you can hit classroom and then the code is TCYP. PCAD. It's right there. Or you can just uh, click on the link that should be in the chat and answer some questions so we can get to know who is here watching. So I'll be watching on my screen what you guys see and what are you are, where everyone is. And Let's see. So I'm gonna uh, just look at who's here. I got names here. I can see um, who's answering questions. Um, it'll let us know where people are from. So all over the world, it'll be interesting to find out your backgrounds. And uh, so some of you guys have used this before um, and many of you have not used it or just used it occasionally. Um, and so this is great for, um, so I'll, I'll teach you how to get into uh, GeoGebra Classroom that just gets us to know who you are um, and see, yeah, lots of high school math teachers. And that's what I teach. And I will be mostly focusing on geometry, but uh, we'll also look at other areas like uh, calculus, algebra, et cetera. Um, okay, and fun pictures here, excellent. So you can see like you can um, anonymize the students and I just get to know what is going on. Okay, so excellent, so uh, fabulous. And I am going to now um, move on to showing you how do you create a, um, 
Uh, oh, I will talk about the agenda. So our agenda, we're going to create a GeoGebra account first. So if you have not done that before, uh, what you want to do is go to GeoGebra.org. So GeoGebra.org. Once you hit GeoGebra.org, um, it is really helpful when it says, um, so I'm signed in already, but it'll be a sign in. Um, and when you do the sign in key, you will want to, if you have a Gmail account, it is really nice to just um, sign in with Gmail. Um, and once you do that, uh, just click on uh, your Gmail account and you're basically in. Um, so creating a GeoGebra account is pretty quick. So you go to geogebra.org, uh, select sign in, and that should be in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And then click the Google button to link your Google account to GeoGebra. And then um, you just have a, you don't have to fill out the profile screen. We just have our students just sign in with Google and they're they're in. So if you have questions, uh, put it in the chat. Uh, but Steve Phelps actually showed a really good um, webinar on like it's like a two minute video. And that's in our notes that we'll share with you at the end. I'm going to um, now just show you how do you find like a quick um, quick material. So like, let's say I've never used GeoGebra before. I am going to start class. I need to, I'm going to be teaching on circles. So I go to geogebra.org. I go into this um, upper, um, it's like this, um, oh, if I just ask, search classroom resources is a great way to do it. So like, let's say I want to go to circle or circles, um, and it'll show me a bunch of uh, different activities that I might want to uh, click on. If um, you are like, just, you don't have a lot of time, um, but you want your students to have like a great activity from Tim Brzezinski. Um, you can just click on one of the activities and you can just copy and paste that URL. And I've done that many times in my Canvas um, or your LMS. Um, any like you can share it with your students and then they can click on it and uh, just explore on their own. Um, I will show you in a few minutes how you can actually see what they're doing. But if you just want a quick activity and you don't even you don't need to see their screens, I would encourage you to just copy and paste that URL. Uh, there are other ways you can search GeoGebra. So if I just go back to GeoGebra, again, we can go to search classroom resources. You can also um, go down to um, Oh, where else? Uh, lots of different places you can. You could go to classroom resources. So click on classroom resources. So where was that? That was GeoGebra. I can click on classroom resources right here. And then you see this web. And um, let's say I want to do the same thing. I can go from math to geometry to, let's say, circles. Um, and if I don't see circles, maybe I'll be like, hmm, maybe what I'm looking for is in angles. So maybe I'm looking for angles or um, I can keep exploring, but maybe that's not the link I want. Maybe I'll look at uh, plain figures instead. So lots of different ways you can find things. Or another fun thing I like to do is uh, people. So um, I follow a lot of people, but one of you know the mean people I follow is Steve Phelps. So I'll go to Steve Phelps and then I'll look at some of his things um, or um, I might just want to look at activities. So uh, a lot of different ways you can just find an activity, click on it and share that link with students. Again, a little later, I'll show you how you can actually see and create a Google Classroom, uh, create a lesson. Uh, let's go back to Steve and we're going to move on to, um, so we did create a GeoGebra account. We found some GeoGebra activities and uh, now Steve's going to go on to the next. Uh, thanks, Elizabeth. Tim, if you could share my screen, that would be fantastic. So, oh my goodness gracious, that was a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, so GeoGebra, I love GeoGebra and I'm on the landing page right now. So when I go to GeoGebra.org, uh, this is the page I land on. Um, upper right corner, you'll see my icon or my my face. I can never change that picture. I don't know why. Um, so that picture is always there for me. On the left-hand side of the screen, um, I'm at home right now, but there's news feed, resources, profile, people in classroom. 
And now Elizabeth will take you through the classroom a little bit later. I want to talk to you like if, if you find these applets, like how can I kind of like organize the things that I find so that I can find them later? I, I do a terrible job of this. I do an absolutely terrible job of this. But um, I, I will show you a couple of things that you can do. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about favoriting applets right now. And I'll probably have a little bit of time. I'll show you how to maybe organize it in a folder. And later on, um, I will show you how to organize them in a GeoGebra book, which is something that you could share with your students in a GeoGebra lesson. So uh, again, I am on the home page right now. And this is usually where I access the apps. I'm going to go to the left side of my screen. And I'm going to click on resources. And so the resources is where I like to go to look for stuff. And uh, on the resources right now, there's there are some tabs at the top. They may be hard to see. You can almost you might miss them if you're not looking for them. But there are three small tabs at the top of my screen. There's Explore, Favorites, ta -da, and Mine, which are things that I have created. So I'm going to start on the Explore tab. And as, as I begin to look for things into the resources, Elizabeth touched on this web. Um, this, this is a great kind of searching resource. So if I'm wanting to do something in, say, statistics, I can click on the statistics bubble, and it kind of bubbles up into this other web where statistics is now at, at the center. And so what I can do now with statistics at the center, maybe I want to work on some things with correlation. So I could click on correlation. And that takes me a little bit further. Now, you might be wondering, OK, Steve, you're clicking on these bubbles. Where are the activities? And the activities for this will show up down here at the bottom a little bit further. So somehow, some way, when the authors created these activities, Correlation was either in the title or correlation was one of the keywords. So these activities pop up on your screen as um, as something along with correlation. So I'll click on, I've got mine popped up there in the, in the upper left-hand corner. Imagine that. Since I taught statistics for a long time, it's not a surprise that I have some correlation things. And so as I look through this activity, so the... A lot of things on here. I might want to come back to this later. Um, I'm kind of in between classes. I've got like a couple minutes, may, maybe at the end of a class. I'm trying to get something ready or try to find something. I saw something later. So in this activity, I want to just add this to my favorites. So in the upper right corner of my screen, right next to the Create Lesson button, are three vertical dots. And when I click on those three vertical dots, the first thing in that menu that pops up is Add to Favorites. And so if you click on the Add to Favorites button, or click on that, not really a button, I guess Add to Favorites, the word. When I go back to those three vertical dots now, let's try that again. And it, sometimes it should fill in. We'll find out if it's in my favorites. And it might already be in my favorites is why it's not kind of seems to be clicking. So how do I get back to where my favorites were again? Because I'd like to see if that's actually in my favorites. In the upper left-hand corner, there are, are the three horizontal segments, a pancake stack, if you will. Now, if I click back on the pancake stack, I can go back to my resources. And then I can go to the favorites tab. And very weird that that favorites button didn't stick. So, the, so, so I got that little link down there at the bottom that says the resource could not be added to your favorites. And I think it probably wouldn't be added to my favorites because it's mine. But all these other ones are mine also. That certainly is puzzling. Certainly is puzzling. Another way you can get to your favorites is we're in the resource area. If I go to my profile, now there are five smaller tabs up at the top of the screen. And with those five smaller tabs, I can look at favorites this way. 
And so these are other things that I have favorited over time. And they all show up. And it doesn't matter where you are. You're either in your resources tab or in the profile. This is kind of like the things that you create. So or kind of kind of your your area in the JoJibra website. So I'm going to go back here again. I'm going to scroll down a little bit further because, because it didn't work last time. Now I'm going to see if I pick another one. So here's this activity on parallel lines in the coordinate plane. I'm going to go to the three vertical dots in the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to click on add to favorites. And it's not sticking. I don't know. That my When that happens, I usually think of it, you get what you pay for. This is a free thing. It's a free service. It works well. Usually. But yeah, didn't show up my favorites. But anyway, that's a great thing. So here's another way, here's another way you can organize your stuff and then I'll be done. On my profile tab, I've clicked on my profile. There is a small little button right underneath my profile picture and my name that says create. If I uh, click on that, it gives me some options. I can create a folder, an activity, or a book. And folders and books are great ways to kind of organize your resources. I'm going to click on folder. And I'll give this a new one. I'll just call this a new folder. But again, I do it. And there's my error message at the bottom of my screen. The resource could not be added to your favorites. That's OK. So I'm going to click on create. And so the new folder is right here. And I can literally drag and drop items into that folder if I want to. Or I can go to the three vertical dots and I can move the object. I can move to and there's my new folder. So it's been moved to resource it moved, moved from my resources to the new folder. So I'll go back there to my, my resources or my profile. And let's click on that little folder and see if it actually happened. And so inside that folder, there is that activity. So the, there are two ways that you can, there are two ways that you can organize the materials. So as you're planning for lessons in the future, one is to create a folder and the other is to do favorites. Obviously, favorites is not one of my favorites right now because it does not seem to be working. But the folder does seem to be working. You can drag and drop your folders or you can move them from the three vertical dots in the upper right hand corner. And uh, when, when I come back here in about 10 minutes or so, I will share how to create a GeoGebra book, which is something that you can share with other teachers and students as well. But I'm going to toss this back to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I think you're muted. There we go. Okay. That's uh, so, okay. So uh, here we go. We are now, I'm going to start a GeoGebra lesson. And as we're talking about every new item in the agenda, we'll be doing a little review. So again, you would uh, go to GeoGebra.org. And after you have created your account, you would sign in and then just click sign in with Google. And you should see your icon, whether it's a picture or just a letter um, but you can change uh, that if you want. And a lot of times students enjoy um, making it more personal. So I am going to show you how to create a lesson. So let's say um, I don't want just the links for my students. I want to actually see what they're doing in the classroom. So again, sometimes you just want a link. If it's just real quick, put it in your Canvas or put it in your uh, learning management system, LMS, just so that students or send them an email with the link so that they can do some discovery learning, look at some concepts. And sometimes you really want to see what they're, um, how they're learning. And so to do that, let's say that I am going to search classroom resources. Uh, let's say that I want to talk about um, inscribed. Let's say inscribed uh, angles in uh, circles. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to randomly pick one. So let's, I don't know who Katie Drock is. Hello, Katie Drock. Uh, great. I'll use your activity. So let's say I like this. So I'm going to review with you. Um, and let's say, you know, I have like five minutes right now. And before my class starts, I just want to like put this in favorites. So I can add this to favorites. 
And once I add it to favorites, I can go back and find it. Um, and, um, and then I can create the lesson. So let's say I want to create the lesson. So if I want it as is, I can just click right up here in the upper right hand corner, create lesson. And let's say I just want to call it inscribed angles, or maybe it's section like 10 point five or something like that. So you can just take it as is and um, I am going to create and now I'm going to see what my students do. So what did what are they seeing? They're seeing this picture so they'll be able to play around with this um, and then they'll be able to answer so there's a little rounding error. You can see that um, right there, but now it goes okay. So you can play around, you can re, um, program stuff, or you can just tell your students, so it's uh, just tweak it a little. You'll see that there's a relationship between the two angles, and then you can answer, have the students answer the questions. So that is just a quick way to just copy and paste someone's activities. Um, and once I create that activity, uh, GeoGebra, Autom GeoGebra Classroom, now it's in GeoGebra Classroom, automatically creates a code. And so again, right now, for you guys, if you're just joining right now, um, there is a GeoGebra Classroom going on right now. So I don't know, Tim, if you need to re um, like show that link again from the beginning so that they can answer some questions and just experience from the student side a classroom. And so um, one reason why I created a classroom for this presentation is to see who is watching this and uh, which, a, uh, like which age uh, students you're working with. We have some at the elementary, some at the middle school, and most of you are high school teachers. And most of you are not uh, comfortable or familiar with GeoGebra, especially the geometry app. And so that gives me a good understanding of who you are. And so I would highly encourage you guys to, and so you don't have to use this one, but Tim, excellent. So you're one of my students in this class, but this is just, if you want to just, I just copy. Added it to the, I just added, I'm sorry. I just added yeah, it to the thing no. so other people can join too. Sorry. Absolutely. If you want to do this, I just want to show you that this is just copy and pasted some activity that someone else created. Now let's say I want to, uh, create a new one. So I want to just edit someone's. So let's say I want to edit Katie's. So what I can do is I can copy instead of just, um, I, I can, uh, instead of creating the lesson, I can copy the activity. So now I can change some things around. If you have a little more time or you want to be a little more particular about what you want to do. So let's say inscribed angles. And I'm going to say, my version or something like that. So you can now move stuff around and maybe I like her questions, but I'm going to add something. Maybe I want to add, oh, maybe I want to just add like something like a, uh, like a warm up question. And like, maybe I just want to ask them like, how are you doing today? Um, but this is more just text. So this is not actually like they can't respond to this. So what you want to do instead is, oh, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to, um, oh, let's see. I will delete that and I'm going to add an element and I want to ask them a question. So you can do a text, like have a statement. You can add an image, a website, but let's say I want to ask them a question and this will be like your warm up or uh, how are you doing today? So I can just say, how are you? How are you? And then let's just have it an open question. And I want to move this uh, done. I'm going to just put it done. But I want to move this up. So I can move this up to the very beginning. So oftentimes, I would encourage you uh, to take someone's um, already made activity and then just add one thing or two things, or you could say, uh, do you remember what we learned yesterday? Or uh, you can take someone else's a uh, couple of different activities also. So I'm gonna save and, and close. So it's saving right now. And then I can make this into a lesson. And that means if I make it into a lesson, that means it's going into a uh, GeoGebra classroom. And so now I can share the link with my students and um, I can see how they're answering the questions. Now, this is still saving. I'm not sure why um, this is taking some time. But anyways, that's how you, those are the steps for uh, create, like finding activity um, and 
making it, you could just copy paste it into a classroom lesson, or you can copy it and then change some things and then um, save it. So I'm not sure why I'm still saving. Um, so let's try this again. So anyways, I have not had problems with this before. Uh, which, so anyways, but those are the steps you would do. So then it would be, so if I go to my, if I go to geodebra.org and um, I would go to my profile and like uh, Steve said, you know, it's nice to have folders up here so I can find an activity or a, um, uh, uh, some sort of lesson that I've used. So you can tell this is an activity, activity, and this is a lesson. So the lesson has the link to it. The um, activities are just where you could just share this link with students, but they can, you cannot see what they're doing. So if you just copy and paste that link, they can't see, you can't see what they're doing. But if you put it into the uh, GeoGebra classroom, so back to here, uh, again, um, if it's in a lesson format, that's where it's GeoGebra classroom, so you can see what they're doing. Okay, so um, next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, creating a GeoGebra book. And uh, as Steve talks about that, he'll do a little review of the previous topics. So over to you, Steve. Thanks, Elizabeth. Oh, man, this is good. So I'm hoping Tim put the screen up. Hope he's still awake. So here's, here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. And I, and I, had, thank you, sir. I had some issues earlier saving, and I think some of those saving issues might still be carrying forward because I just tried to actually delete an activity or delete something from my, my uh, profile and it wasn't deleting. So sometimes that happens. So again, I'm in, um, I'm not in the landing page. If you recall, when you go to Jojra, you'll end up on the home page, the landing page for Jojra. Love this. We're going to come back to this a little bit later on this evening. I'm going to go to the left-hand side, and I like to navigate. Unless I'm, If I'm looking for resources, I'm going to go to resources. But I, I want to see the things that I'm created, that I've used, and I'm going to go to my profile. So on the left-hand side, right in the middle, I'm going to click on my profile. And this is like my, my stuff, the things I've created, things maybe that I have favorited up at the top. But I'll go back to the resources in my profile. These are folders I've created. And folders are only for organization. I cannot share a folder. And I'm hoping I'd like to add yet to that. I'm, I'm hoping that they will change that. I would love to be able to share a folder with other teachers at the very least. But right now, right, it's just a place to organize. And then um, if I go down a little bit further, these are my resources, things that I have done. And Elizabeth started to kind of touch on this. Uh, there are three different types of kinds of activities that I can have in my resources. This one on the left-hand side, you'll see that that is a lesson. So this is an activity that I clicked on that uh, GeoGebra lesson or create lesson button in the upper right-hand corner. And now kids can join this activity and I can see what they're doing in this activity. Um, this is just a regular old activity. Kids could, I, I could click on it. I could demo this. So not everything, students don't need to do everything with it. You can just use it as a demonstration if you want to kind of bring a typical lecture lesson to life. But this is an activity that the kids could mess with, but I would not be able to see what they are doing. And this on the right-hand side is a book. A book is like a folder that has, let me click on it and we'll see what it looks like. No idea. So this is a book that I'll share a little bit later. There are six activities inside of this book. And what's nice about books is I can share books with students. I can share books with other teachers. If I go to the upper uh, the three vertical dots, I can either share it using the share link or I can just copy the uh, URL out of the web browser. Either of those will work. If I really, really like this, I can 
copy this book for myself. So if I found a book that someone else had, I really liked it, maybe I wanted to add or delete some activities to it, I could copy the book. And so you could do the same thing to this. Oh, I did not mean to do that. That was a teacher technique. So that this is a this is what a book is. A book is a collection, could be similar items, usually they are, but it's it's a collection of activities that I can create a lesson out of in the upper right hand corner and my students could then work through this activity. So I'm gonna go back to my profile and walk you through the steps like how can I create a JoJira book? So I'm gonna go, again, I went back to my home screen. I, I, I did that kind of quickly. So let me, let me go back again. I'm in the book. I wanna get back to like the landing page and I just click on the Jojibar icon in the upper left-hand corner. No matter what page you're on, if you click on that Jojibar icon in the upper left-hand corner, it's going to take you back to the landing page. And then I can go back to my profile. So under my profile, under my, uh, my face and my name is the Create button. And I just would like to create a book. And I will give this, so let me zoom in a little bit to make this a slightly larger. So it's going to require a title. I'll give it a title, and I'll just call this, uh, creatively enough, a new book. And I am, I am terrible with giving it descriptions. I, could, I should probably give it a description. Um, this is uh, for the EGP webinar. And I never really do anything with the target grades. Um, adding tags is good, but again, it's, I, I'm usually making something for myself and for my kids. So the tags for me are, are kind of almost irrelevant and I almost can, I, you can go back and put the tags in later. Um, everything else on this page, I'm going to le leave it alone. Shared with link, everything else is good. I scroll down a little bit further towards the bottom and I'm going to click on save. And so now I'm on the, um, I was kind of like doing the front page. And so now I'm got, this is like the book part where I can add the activities to the book. And there are a couple of things that to, I'll point out. On the left-hand side, I can create chapters in my book. And on this button here is where I can add activities. And so there's a lot of ways to get activities into this book. But if I click on the add an activity, Um, some of my activities pop up because I'm in my resources. I'm going to search for centroid and see what comes up. Oh, okay. So centroid of two rectangles. I'll take Tim's, the medians and centroid dance. So I'm going to click on that. Oh, that was, a, that was a teacher technique. I did not mean to do it that way. Edit the book. I will scroll down and I will click on the add button. And that's going to add into the activity. And if I want to add another one, I'll find another centroid. I just click, type it in, click on it, click on enter. And if I scroll down a little bit further, I'm going to add this activity, a centroid construction challenge. And so um, I can take a view of what this book looks like in the upper right-hand corner of my screen. There's a small button that says view book. So I can view the book and this is what it looks like right now. I only have two things in it. There are no chapters and I'm gonna click on the back arrow to get back to the editing page. I never, I'm always kind of lost when I get to that view book. How the heck do I get back here? I did not add a chapter, but if I added a chapter, we can see what that would look like. So I'll click on a new chapter. And I'm just going to call this a um, I'm pretty boring, guys. Pretty boring. I'll just call this chapter one. And I'm not going to add a description. I already did, I already did my one limit description today. I did a description earlier and when I created the book. I only do one description a day. So I'll, so there's chapter one, and I'm going to click on it. Let's add another one. And of course, we're going to call it. Chapter two.
And so when I click on chapter two, nothing is in it because everything by default was in the chapter one. But let's see. I wonder if this will work. I wonder if I, 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 let's try this and see. I wonder if I can click this and drag it. Oh, did I drag it into chapter two? And it's in chapter two. So there's chapter one. There's chapter two. And I literally can just drag these tiles around to change the orders of the things in my book. And let's take a view of what this looks like now. So if I go back to my view book, oh, on the left-hand side, here are my chapters. Here's chapter one, and here's chapter two. So it's a, it's a slightly different way to organize your resources for other teachers and for your students. So I can go to the, so what's different between a, a folder and this is that I, I can share this. I can share this with other teachers and students. I can also create a lesson out of this. So I can go up there in the upper right-hand corner. I can click on create a lesson and then I can provide, a, it gives me the name. I, I've got choices. I have choices on what I wanna share with my kids. Do I wanna share the entire book or just, a, just part of an activity? And if I click on new book, the kids would get the entire book. That could be a little bit overwhelming, so be careful. If I just wanna do a certain activity, I can do a certain activity, but um, I'm not going to create that because you've seen the activities. So that that is a, another another way to organize your resources, things that you find. If you want to create a nice lesson, putting some things together, and uh, uh, in a little bit, I'll share some other favorites of mine that are organized in books, and we'll share those links with you as well so you can explore, and we'll talk about ways you can edit these things later as well. So that is another way, in, a, in other than favorites and other than folders, is creating a GeoGebra book to organize your resources. And uh, I'm going to throw this back to Elizabeth now, and... Um, I think we're going to start sharing. We'll probably do a couple more shares and maybe take a break. All right. I am going to now uh, show you how you can actually do some geometry in GeoGebra. And um, I saw in the chat someone asked about, I teach uh, elementary school math. This is a lot of high school stuff. What should I do? And one of the recommendations in the chat was, uh, again, go to, uh, you know, if you go to just click on GeoGebra, uh, click on people. And if you type in, let's say, Dwayne, I don't know how to say his last name, Haybecker, uh, he has a lot of middle school and elementary school activities. So if you know of some, uh, some people who are focused on high school, you want to teach high school, middle school, etc. It's just, it's nice to be able to know uh, some people. Um, if not, you just go to people in general and you can just, uh, they're just hundreds of people. So uh, I just want to let you guys know GeoGebra is a wonderful community. Uh, once you've created an account, you are in the GeoGebra community. I actually have my GeoGebra t-shirt on. I don't know if you can see that, but um, it's just, it's, it's such a great uh, way you can get resources for your classroom and uh, people are so willing to help each other out. So again, uh, you know, it's helpful to uh, share things uh, with your students, but it's also nice to put things in public so that um, uh, in the public part of GeoGebra so that people can use your stuff and um, and they can use it just as is or they can um, make it their own. So what I'm going to do is show you what I have my students in geometry um, in my geometry classes do the first quarter. Now, this was really um, the brainchild of one of my coworkers. And so uh, this is Mark Shapleski's project. And then as the years went on, all of us uh, tweaked it a bit. And so if you like, there should be a link in the chat 
Uh, one of the versions we have, we have different versions uh, for all of our projects. We actually, for geometry, we have a quarter project for each quarter. So we have four projects and we update them and change them every year, depending on needs of students and, you know, if it's COVID, um, et cetera. Um, like if we should have more YouTube instructional videos, et cetera. So here's just a link to this first um uh, project and it's just getting the students to know how to use the geometry app in GeoGebra. So um, uh, first of all, you just go to geogebra.org and we want to get into the geometry app. So what does that mean? Um, it means if you go to, so there are a lot of apps. Um, so here it talks about powerful map apps. There's the calculator suite, the geometry, there's a 3D calculator, CAS calculator. Uh, there are um, the notes. Uh, we won't, I don't think, get into that here, but you can Google it. Um, but I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner, uh, the three by three squares, or I just tell the students the nine squares. And in geometry class, I like to just start with geometry app. Now, the calculator suite is really nice because it goes back and forth between um, some. Uh, the tables and um, algebra and uh, geometry. But I like to start with geometry app. And um, with that, I have my students go through. And again, this is from Mark Shapusky's um, idea of let's get the students to just uh, work one part, like uh, just get to know how to use some of these basic tools in the geometry app. And uh, we don't even get into the algebra part of it in this first quarter. We just go to the tools, the geometry tools. And I am going to show you what like an end project would look like where they talk about their name and they can make it their own colors that they like. Uh, they're making a ray, they're making a line segment with a particular or just a, a length where we can move that around. And when I check a student's project, I'm moving it around to find out if it is dynamic uh, because it should be dynamic. It should be like uh, an angle bisector cuts the angle in half, meaning the two angle measures are the same. So when I move it, it should stay, you know, so that they are still congruent. Um, so anyways, this is the entire project where students are creating uh, different ideas, which we haven't talked about parallel lines and transversals. Uh, at this point, we're just having them learn the constructions in GeoGebra to get comfortable with the geometry uh, tools. Uh, and it also is helps them to come up with some ideas, some conjectures. So they don't really know, uh, like they have to answer like, what are three things you notice here? And so they have to uh, organize it. What I want to go through right now is I want to just go through the steps of creating. Let's let's create this idea just so that you guys can do some things on your own if you want. Now, again, if you're a new teacher this year, I would highly encourage you to just copy an activity from that's already been made. Uh, so for instance, I would go to geogebra.org and in the classroom, oftentimes I would just, so let's say we want to talk about um, transversals, uh, transversal, and maybe I'm just going to, I just, uh, let's say Glenn Resor, let's see what he has here. And so he's already made this. And so the kids could play around with this again, just copy and paste this link. And uh, you could either just copy and paste this link in their email or their Canvas or any other LMS like Google um, Classroom, et cetera. Or you can uh, create a lesson uh, so you can see in GeoGebra Classroom what they're doing, or you can copy the activity and then you can make it your own. You could add something if you wanted to. But let's say you want to learn how, how do you even make an applet like this? This is just an applet. Um, and this whole thing is called an activity. So how do you make one of these applets? So um, what I would do is I would go to, again, we went to Geom GeoGebra. I went to the nine squares and I'm going to hit the geometry app. And in geometry app, I am going to go to the upper right hand corner where there's a gear, the settings, and I'm going to get rid of axes uh, for now and get rid of the grid, no grid, 
And I am just going to create a line. So line, a point, and another point. And then I want to create a parallel line. And I have a whole, um, because this is a, uh, a project, quarter one project. Uh, during COVID, I went through and made videos of all my projects of just getting, it's an instructional video, 10 to 15 minutes for each project so that it helps the students be guided. Instead of me being there in the classroom, they could just watch it and start working on the project. And so if this is going too fast for you, no problem. Um, I have, you can go to, oh, let me show you what you can do with this. In, um, I can go down and I'm going to just put in a text here. And um, so again, this is the geometry tools and I just went down to more text and I'm just going to write down, um, if you go to youtube.com, uh, okay, and you can type in Elizabeth Moslick and I have all my instructional videos you can use, uh, use with your students, use as an instructional video for yourself. And then you can um, uh, say Elizabeth Moss, like let's say projects. And um, there is a, uh, let's bold it and everything. So I'll just show you how like you can put in a text and let's say we wanna make it bigger. So I would wanna go to uh, the pointer tool and I'm gonna click on here and uh, let's just make it bigger so you can see it. Okay, so you could go to YouTube, um, type in Elizabeth Moslick Projects, and if you want to see how you construct uh, a little slower, or uh, you know, you can rewind it and um, pause at times too. So anyways, I wanna create a parallel line. And so I'm gonna go back to my tools and I want to go into the construction part. So I wanna construct a parallel line. And so if I just click on parallel line, there's this black, uh, rectangle that ooh, it's it just goes for a short time. So I'm going to click on it again and read it. I want to select the parallel line and a point. So it tells you what to do if you are not familiar. So I'm going to select the line and then I'm going to select a point. And now I'm going to go back to the pointer. And now I want to uh, just create a, um, oh, I should probably do another point on this line, right? So I need to uh, create a point on this line. So I'm going to find a point. So in this tool, I need more. I need to find point. Oh, point on object. So I'm going to click on that. And here it's a select object or it's perimeter. So I'm going to collect, select this. And here we go. We have a point. And now let's say I want to have a uh, transversal on these. So we, these are parallel. And I'm going to create a transversal. So let's just do, I'll just do a um, a line. So I have a point and then another point here and pointer. So here's just a quick way of showing you some sort of construction in GeoGebra. I'm going to hit under points intersect because I need to find this point and this point. So intersect and this line and this line. And again, in my tutorial, um, it, this goes a lot faster, but I just want to in this to our webinar, Steve and I are trying to encourage you guys to use GeoGebra at your level without overwhelming you, uh, letting you see that there's a lot available, whether you're teaching elementary all the way to college, um, and it is just amazing. So feel free to email me anytime during the year if you guys have questions. Steve is amazing with helping also. And so um, I just need to make sure that our time, ooh, we're getting a little late on time, but I'll show you just a little more. So I want to go to measure because I want to measure an angle. So I'm going to measure the angle. Let's go from, let's say, E to G to B, and then let's go B to G to H. I'm just going to do a few of these, G to H to D, and I'm not going to do all of them just because it's I'm running a little short on time. Go back to the pointer. I'm going to move those angles out, and you can see there's a relationship. And again, the students would uh, find all eight of those angles and then realize that if you move things, it's again, it's a dynamic software, math software is GeoGebra. And so you can see the relationship between these angles. A great way for students to explore. And if you just don't have the time in your class to have students create this, again, it's just like when, you know, you go to the 
uh, the resources that others, other teachers have created and find something you like. And it's amazing what's out there. And again, you can just copy and paste that link or put it into a classroom. Uh, Steve, you're up. Assume that we'll take, we'll do this next block and then let's take a little break then. Is that fair enough? All sure. Right. Cool. Cool. Tim, if you want to drop that, uh, drop the cursive link. So there, Elizabeth said a couple of things and I think, um, I, I, she, she had mentioned that, you know, there are some really good elementary resources, but there are also some non-math resources that are available in GeoGebra. And so I, I've been working with some, with some elementary school teachers over the last couple of years. And there were some students who were struggling with their cursive letters. So this is meant simply a demonstration. Um, you can choose, this is a GeoGebra book that has all of the different cursive letters. So here is M. And the idea is that I wanted to be able to animate the letters being drawn so the students could practice it but still see the animations. So I've had teachers use this as a lesson. And I've also had teachers use this just up on their screen on the board and the kids would practice writing M's in cursive. So here's a non-math thing, but as a literacy-based thing that you could share with your teachers, especially if you're an elementary teacher. Um, Tim, if you would drop the other link in there, that would be fantastic. Another um, literacy-based thing that I, I used, if you, I, I call this nonsense words, might look very, very similar to like an Orton Gillingham blending board, but I don't wanna say that. This is more like a nonsense word. And so I can choose if, if I want to, uh, oh, I did not mean to zoom, I need to fix that. So I can change just the beginning letters, um, or I can change the middle ones, or I can change all of them at one time. And do I want a silent E at the end to show up randomly or not? And maybe I just want to have a certain letter I want to practice at the end. And so this is another thing that as kids are learning to sound out words, um, they could use this app, put it on their board, tap it on the smart board. And so they were having to do this when we were coming back from pandemic, um, Kids had to be apart from each other, so the typical nonsense word cards are very small, but this was very large. So here are a couple of resources for your um, literacy-based teachers, your English-based teachers, your uh, writing-based teachers. They can use these resources as well. But I wanted to show you, um, Tim, if you would drop the Proof Without Words app. Uh, that link into the chat as well. So Tim is dropping these links into the chat and I have no idea how long it takes to get to you. Um, this is what this is one of my favorites and it just kind of keeps it keeps growing and uh, it's it's one of those things that you probably would not want to create a lesson from, but you might want to pull out bits and pieces of these lessons and then share them with kids, maybe one at a time or two at a time. And so, for example, there are over 50 different um, proofs that have a Pythagorean theorem flavor to them. And if you, when you get to the bottom, you'll see shapes that aren't squares, but the Pythagorean theorem is not really a theorem about squares, it's a theorem about areas. And so as long as the shapes are similar, they will work. So what if I wanted to, um, I, I, I love this activity. I don't want to give all of these to my kids at one time. How, how can I just share one or two activities with my kids? So I like this uh, Pythagorean theorem proof with this triangle here. I'm going to click on this puppy and let's see what happens. And so I, I play with this. I kind of drag the green point. I don't, I have no idea what's going to happen. And when I drag the slider slowly, so this, this could also be an action consequence activity. But yeah, this does, I, I, I go from a small equilateral triangle to a larger equilateral triangle with a hole inside. So there is a proof to the Pythagorean theorem in here. So I like this activity. I want to get it to my kids. I don't want the entire book. I just want this activity. I could go to create a lesson, but maybe I want to see how this was done. So I'll go up there to the three vertical dots. And towards the bottom of this menu, um, I just want to copy the activity. 
it probably won't let you edit the activity. So you might not have a lot of these things because this activity doesn't belong to you, but you should be able to copy it. So I'm going to copy the activity. And what it does, it grabs just that activity. And if you wanted to change the name, I could click on that at the top and change the name if I wanted to. If I wanted to change my instructions, I could change some instructions. If I wanted to go down here to the bottom and I wanted to add some questions, some reflection questions, or um, maybe a uh, maybe a video or some other kind of a, a resource that get kids to look at this a little bit different, I can add those things. But when you're satisfied and happy, I'm just going to click on save and close. And now you might be wondering, wait a minute, I saved and closed it. Where does that activity go? I just saved it. Where did it go? So I'm going to go back over here to the pancake stack in the upper left-hand corner. Oh, I'm in a GeoGebra book, so that won't work. So I'm just going to click on the GeoGebra link instead, that GeoGebra icon in the upper left-hand corner. And that will take me back to the landing page. And I want to find where that, that I just copied that activity and I just made a change to it. Where did it go? And that's going to go to your profile. And I need to scroll down a little bit so I can see them. Now I've got a bunch, but you'll have you'll have a few eventually. And so there is the copy of the Pythagorean theorem proof, and it's just that it's just that activity and nothing else. You could have also copied the book itself if you wanted to, but uh, that's how I can. Um, th th that's one of the Pythagorean theorem uh, proof without words. It, it's just a nice way to get kids to kind of a. Uh, um, explain things, you know, th they think about proofs, th they only think of the Pythagorean theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but really it is, it's a statement about areas and not just squares. So something to think about, one of my favorites. So I think, um, Elizabeth, I think this is probably a good time to take a break. And so I think we'll, we'll uh, take five minutes. I think that's what Tim said. We'll do five minutes, right, Tim? Five? Yeah, why not? We'll set it for five minutes here. It's like 58 minutes past, so we'll start at like uh, 03 or 04, whatever. So we'll just hide everything here. We'll leave the uh, thumbnail on so people can get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, do whatever, and we'll come back and pick it up. Cool. See you guys in a bit. Right.
we're halfway there. This is awesome. The comments have been awesome. You guys, the people loving this. This is great. So, um, yeah, thank you, Steve and Elizabeth, for doing this again. So we're up to start hour two. Who's who's uh, who's kicking it off now? Elizabeth. Oh, Steve, I sent right. you uh, in the private chat. I was thinking because we're a little because we weren't expecting the break. I was thinking maybe you do the poorly drawn, and I'll squeeze in my favorite two with my favorite three to save time. What do you think about that? Less it than makes a difference. So you want me to good. want me to do that now? Uh, yeah, so um, you can definitely do favorite two now. Sure. I'll do poorly drawn figures. Sounds good. That is my personal favorite. Ooh. That's an awesome one. That's really good. That's I use good. it all the time. I love it. Um, Elizabeth, there is a request for your four quarters activity. I'm not familiar with that one, I don't think. But yeah, I don't know so if you can push that they'll in or just, not. They'll need to send me an email because there are a lot of links to it. So it's like the YouTube links. It's the... There are lots ah. of geo, uh, uh, Google Forms and stuff, so like Google Docs and stuff. So, um, and I have my email at the end of one of the things we're sharing with them. I think it's at the end of the um, participant survey. I might have put it in there. So, and and we need the answer key to the proof without words. <laughs> there is no answer key to the proof without words. There's no answer key for this one either. So. So Tim, go ahead and if you yes. would share the the poorly drawn figures book link, that would. Did be you fantastic. send that in the private chat? I put. I that sent that to you earlier. Chat. Want me to send it again? Uh oh, I got it right here. Ensign Seven WF. That one. It is. Uh, uh I got it. I got it. Seven so WF. Yes. I'll throw that in the chat okay. right now, and I'll get everybody else's face off here, so it'll be you. So we just put it up there. All right, so we'll go poorly drawn. This one's fun. I love this one. Gets I've seen kids argue and have fights over this. It's pretty cool. Verbal uh, quads. This one is a game changer in the geometry classroom. So there it is. It's out there. So Steve, go for it. Take it away. All right, kids. Welcome back from the break. So uh, let me share poorly drawn figures with you. I'm trying to expand this a little bit. Um, how, how did this come about? Uh, I taught geometry for a long time. I never liked how kids were asked to prove things about a figure or a shape, but the figure was drawn the way it was supposed to be drawn. So if they were asked to prove something as a parallelogram, the shape was drawn as a parallelogram, kids couldn't get past the visuals. And so from a Van Healy point of view, where you know, kids kind of early, your early reasoning is based on how things look. Uh, we want to move kids in high school to kind of like inferring, uh, making inferences from the, from the givens. And so this led to this idea of uh, what is called poorly drawn figures. And so, for example, in, in a poorly drawn quadrilateral, and let me get one that's a little bit better so it doesn't look as so there so here's all I know I've got a quadrilateral don't don't look at how it looks look at the markings so ad is marked as congruent to ab and bc is marked as congruent to cd and um, the first two are not marked the same as the last two so we would say the best name for this poorly drawn quadrilateral is a kite. Now, it might, it, maybe all those sides are the same, but I can't say that for certain. I can only go by how it's marked and how it's marked is a kite. So let me choose another quadrilateral. And so again, this is poorly drawn this diagonal from B to D is an angle bisector because these two angles at the bottom are marked as congruent. And AB is marked as congruent to BC. So those two triangles are actually congruent by side angle side. So I think this is another example of a kite. Let's see. Yep. So a number of different quadrilaterals are in here. Here's one that would be um, 
the diagonals are bisecting each other. I like to have my students write an if thens, but I'd like to have them write like just don't say that DE is congruent to EB. Um, put this in words. The diagonals bisect each other. And a quadrilateral with bisecting diagonals is a parallelogram. And some of these are like, this is tricky. This is tricky, kids. That there's tricky. Um, there are some impossible quadrilaterals. I wonder if we'll get lucky enough to just have one pop up. Um, but I know what it looks like when I see it, but I don't see it. So I'm going to go on to the next one. So this is poorly drawn quadrilaterals. And then um, a teacher last year I was working with uh, was working on isosceles triangles. And I said, okay, so let's create a new triangle. Don't go by how it looks. Go by how it's marked. And this is isosceles. It's equilateral, which is isosceles. And now... Um, these two angles at the bottom are marked as different. So I don't believe that is isosceles. So this kind of reviews all of the, uh, all of the different properties. So that segment down the middle from G to K, it's an altitude. Those two angles are marked as the same. So they must be 90 degrees. And the two segments are marked as the same. So K is a midpoint. So it's a median and an altitude. And um, so that should be an isosceles tri uh, triangle. The next one is poorly drawn squares. I just did this uh, coming back from a workshop. Um, a teacher asked about doing squares. So again, are these shapes squares? And I tried to add some uh, reasons why it might be a square. So this is a rhombus with two consecutive angles being congruent. See, I, I tried to put those in ordinary words. And so that is a square, yes. And this is a quadrilateral with diagonals that are bisecting and perpendicular, but that doesn't make it a square. I think that just makes it a rhombus. And let's look at the poorly drawn triangles. So this is this last poorly drawn figure, that's a terrible one. My goodness gracious, what's happening with that one? Quick. So these two triangles, um, are they congruent is what I'm asking for. So are the two triangles congruent? And what is the congruence statement? So don't look at how they look. Look at how they're marked. And so these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And now it just comes down to what is your congruence statement. So those are my, so I could do my triangles. So now um, it's a parallelogram. Those two triangles are congruent, and it's probably something along the lines of a angle side angle would be my guess, because that side is shared and the angles come from the parallel lines. So, so this is a poorly drawn figures. And I know Tim dropped that link in the chat, and you can always shoot me an email. And I've got I've got these links in a Google Doc we can share at the end as well. And if there's some other poorly, there's some other ones I'm thinking of doing, some other poorly drawn figures that some of the teachers I work with would like. And I could, if you've got any ideas, would love to hear those as well. But again, it gets kids to, I, I want them to reason from the markings, not from how it looks. And write your proofs based on the markings, not on how it looks. And that's getting kids to move up the Van Healy levels. So... So poorly drawn, have fun with those. Love to hear your stories, how your kids like them. And kids, Tim, Tim mentioned this, kids get in fights. Kids will literally get in fights about this. So, all right, Elizabeth, I'm going to turn this back over to you. But that's poorly drawn figures, kids. I am unmuting myself. Okay, so I am going to go uh, back to our agenda, and I'm going to show you quickly uh, a project that we do with our students at the end of the school year for geometry, where they have to do a little coding to find geometric probability. I'll show you the end pro project. And uh, they make their own dartboard with some uh, polygons and circles. 
and they take a picture of it and import it into GeoGebra, into the Geo Geometry app, and then create the random point generator to find out at random if there are 100 points, um, at uh, what's the probability that uh, how many points are in a circle, how many points are in the um, square, etc. So uh, I want to go back and just show you again what you do to start with a, like a geometry app. You would go to geogebra.org. I have my students in geometry. Just click on the geometry app. I like that because we're just letting them know about geometry tools. It gets them comfortable with that. Uh, they can import a picture. And so we, we went down here. Oopsies, let me move this down here. We went down here, and you can always press more to see all of the geometry tools. And in media, we did text before. So if you press text and uh, click somewhere on your screen uh, and type something, and um, if you click on the arrow key, you can move it around wherever you want. So we've done that with media and text. You can also import an image. So um, let me go on to, I have a, um, I have this already made. So I, I took a student's picture and I imported it into um, the geometry app. So I just went into, and I just took an image of a student's picture. So that's really fun uh, to import pictures. We have students do that during the first project. And so like here, the last part of the project is they have to make a picture uh, like a stick figure that represents them like me and my chocolate, of course, endangered species chocolate and uh, soccer ball, etc. But anyways, um, so they already know how to import a picture from the beginning of the school year. And um, now in the last quarter, they're going to create the dartboard. And thanks to Steve Phelps, uh, we used to do this by hand and actually um, have students throw... Uh, paper clips on their dartboard, uh, 100 paper clips at random, um, and find the probability of uh, shapes, uh, the, the, the paper clips landing on their shape. And I, to get it really randomized, I, my last year of doing it that way, the undigital version, I had a group of boys who really wanted to make sure it was randomized. And they started running across their room and just like through their paper clips. And it was a really good idea to make it randomized, but it was getting to be a little out of control. So I thought after that, we we have to make this digital. So uh, Steve showed me how to um, create um, a. Um, if you go down more, you could create a button to create a random point generator. I have that already on another uh, YouTube video for my students as well as uh, another geo GeoGebra presentation. I. Uh, I did. So I'm just going to uh, give you guys those links. Just again, my YouTube uh, video. If you go to my YouTube and you just put uh, Elizabeth Moss, like you can find all my videos, uh, my playlist, and you can go to like the GeoGebra uh, ge uh, Geometry Quarter 4 project. And oopsies, I don't want to do that. Sorry. Um, but anyways, you can just find my videos that way too. Uh, so I just wanted to show you how cool it is. Oh, by the way, um, this, if you just look at the code, like what did I do here? I made a polygon. I um, made a sequence. That's the like the secret sauce there uh, that Steve helped me with and making random points and then creating this button. So every time you click it, it uh, creates this randomness, which is really cool. So anyways, very cool, probably way beyond. Uh, if you are a first year teacher, you'll probably not want to do this. But again, three three lines of code uh, has really encouraged my students to sign up for uh, coding uh, or computer science classes. Um, I have been really pushing computer science on students um, who never thought of trying it before. And we have uh, a couple of really, really nice and really good uh, computer science teachers. We went from just a couple of computer science classes to now over two 
uh, full-time teachers of computer science at our school and stuff like this, getting our students hooked into something really fun to do and play with um, can be really encouraging for all of our students to see that they can do that too. Okay, so that's enough of the um, dartboard and just like uh, finding geometric probability. I wanna show you another project I have my students do and I'm gonna go back to geogebra.org and again, in geometry class, I like to just go with the geometry app so that they're just used to these uh, commands over here. And one of the things I have them do third quarter is learning some trigonometry. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to get rid of the axes meaning hiding them, um, no grid. And um, what I'm going to do is, let's say I have, and I have a video of this too. So um, when I tell my students to do this project, what they're doing is they're uh, finding an angle in a triangle given three side lengths of the triangle. So that's using the law of cosines. So the students don't get a lot of practice with uh, doing the law of cosines. I show them a couple of examples and then they're kind of on their own uh, with using the law of cosines with not a lot of extra help. So the question is, did you get the answer right? Like, let's say it was not easy to find like in the back of the book or whatever problem they were assigned. So what I um, have asked them to do in part of this third quarter project, I'm just going to use text button here. And let's say I have, and I have these same three numbers in my video so that um, if this is going too fast, you can go back to my YouTube video and uh, look at. So let's say I have these three numbers. Um, those are side lengths of a triangle. And I want to, um, let's say, so here are those, oh, that is way too small, I believe. So I am going to make this bigger and let's say bold. And um, let's uh, go to uh, text again. And let's say I want to, the question is, oh, I'm just gonna click over here, is uh, find the angle measure between, let's say the uh, side that's 19 and uh, side that's like 21. Um, so that's uh, the question that they're given. Now on the project, they're given a random number of uh, side links. And so they don't have these particular numbers, but I go through how you can check your answer using GeoGebra. And so by using some constructions. So uh, if I go to segment with given length, so if I go into the lines section, I can click on segment with given length and I'm going to click a point and let's start with the biggest side and let's start with 21. And um, there we go. It, and if this is like way too big on your computer, you can zoom in and out with your mouse. Um, and then I am going to uh, create, let's say a circle uh, with center of A and a radius of nine. So I'm going to go to circles, circle, center and radius. So I'm gonna click on that, click on A. So what am I doing here for you guys? Um, just showing you a few more constructions. Uh, you know, you could do it with your students or do it on your own. And so that's uh, nine units. And then I am going to create another circle with center B. And now we'll have our 14 units. So what we're doing is we're trying to construct a triangle with side lengths 19, 9, 14, and 21. Uh, so I am going to go back to the arrow key, meaning just the pointer, the select. And I want to find the intersection point here, and that'll be my third point of the triangle. So A, uh, A B, and C. So let's uh, find that point. So I want to find the intersection point. So I am going to go through all of this, and I'm looking through the points. And I don't find points. So I'm going to go down, scroll all the way down in my tools for geometry, and go to more. And I want to go to points. Oh, here we go. Intersect. So I'm going to click on intersect and I'm going to click on one circle and now the other circle. And now I get this intersection point. This intersection point is here too. I don't need it for this uh, problem. I'm just going to not care about D right now. And I'm going to create triangle ABC. So I'll go to lines and create the segment A to C and then C to B. 
and I'll go back to pointer. So um, I want to just double check that this is a triangle of side lengths 9, 14, and 21. So you can do this like, again, it's a nice way to check students' answers or a student to check their own answers. Um, so I want to find the length of this. So I'm going to go into the measure area of the tools and I want to find the distance or the length of these segments. So I'm going to go from A to C. Excellent, that's nine. C to B, good, that's 14, and B to A. And I'm going to go to pointer and I'm just going to move those segments up. So uh, so they, so they, we've constructed that triangle correctly and now I just want to find the angle measure between 9 and 21, not using trigonometry here. This would just be as a check. And so I'll go to measure the angle. Let's go, let's say C to A to B. And I got that angle measure. Now, uh, let's say that the directions were, it needed to be to three decimal points. Uh, you can go to the upper right of the screen, go to settings three times. So settings, settings, and settings. And uh, we're going to go and let's go to three decimal places. And I want to save those settings. So again, the settings or the um, gear key three times, rounding three places, and then save settings. And um, we're good to go with that. So now you can see uh, we have that measurement. And so that's a great way for students to check. Also, I have students uh, take a picture of their trigonometry work using the law of cosines on this particular part of the project. And um, they have to take a picture of their construction and um, import it, uh, upload their picture right in here. I'm not going to do that right here, but they just have their answer right here. Um, and so, which is really fun because then we can see that we get the same answer and I can see their work. So it's, it's, uh, it's really fun to have them be a little more independent with, you know, did I get this answer right? Well, you figure it out on your own. Uh, so those are a couple more things I wanted to show you using the geometry app on GeoGebra. Uh, back to you, Steve. Oh, man, that was awesome, Elizabeth. That stuff is, oh, my geometry juices are flowing. <laughs> so here, so here is, um, yeah, I, I, I will just add, if you, you just, you just got to let the kids play. The kids will, feel, you do not need to know everything there is to know about GeoGebra. What, your kids can play, and if you've got a classroom of 30 kids, they're going to figure out everything they need to figure out about GeoGebra. It always works out. So if you've started school already, it's not too late just to give them a GeoGebra day and let them play. And if you've not started school yet, I would roll out GeoGebra on the very the very first day I could and just have them dis have them discover different things and let them show you what they've discovered. So um, uh, let me share another book with you. I think Tim dropped this link into the chat for everyone. This, these are action consequences. These are very short ones. Um, Tim's got a bunch of them on, on Joe Karen Camp's another one. But most, uh, I think, action consequence uh, activities, drag a slider, something happens. And um, I like it where you drag a slider and there is one thing that happens. So I, we can focus on just one thing. This is also a Van Healy idea. If you're not familiar with Van Healy's levels of geometric thought, um, helping kids kind of move from one level to the next, this idea of an action consequence and focusing on one particular thing is um is important in getting kids to move from one level to the next. So in, a, in an action consequence, here's one very simple one with a parallelogram. And I, again, this would be more of a demo. Um, as I drag the slider, what property of parallelograms is being demonstrated? And I, and I could also add the other slides translating as well, but... Um, I just did this very quickly. This slide, this is a slider that goes from zero to one, and I'm literally translating that segment from A to D using that using that vector. And so the property that, that and I, I want I want my kids to say this. I don't want to say this, but the property that's being demonstrated is that those opposite sides are congruent in a parallelogram. The kids can say it, 
And if the kids can say it, they should say it. You shouldn't have to say it. Um, same thing with parallel lines. So here is my uh, kind of like my X with the congruent angles uh, colored. And I, I did, I used colors. Uh, I probably should have made additional markings on those for kids who have trouble seeing colors. But uh, here is my action consequence. Drag the slider. And what is happening? So that's so you could get kids to, to, to tell you that those four angles at, at the bottom are congruent to their corresponding counterparts at the top. And they know exactly where they've come from. So they're never going to forget how parallel lines work. They may forget the names, but they're not going to forget where the angles come from. Um, interior and exterior angle sums. So you've, they should do this with paper, but you can also do it digitally as well because sometimes paper can be a little messy. So here's my interior angle sum and how does it, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot of stuff that's going on there in this image. A lot of things that are going on. It might be better to probably move one triangle than the next, but then that would be two steps. I'd like to try to keep this in one, but um, one triangle is sliding to the right and the other one's rotating around. And I get to the bottom and I have these three angles that are side by side uh, forming a straight line. So that angle sum is 180. At least it is if it's on a, on a plane, but not on a sphere. And then here are the exterior angle sums. So I can, this, this is super flexible. And I'm just going to slide this slider and move my angles to that point over there. And that tells you that the angle, the exterior angle sum is uh, one, is 360 degrees. Trapezoid area works the same way. This is a quick one I did uh, today, and and I, and I will share this. My geometry teachers I'm working with will like to use these. So if I want to get to the area formula for a uh, for a trapezoid, I can just rotate that trapezoid. And so now I've got a parallelogram. The height of my parallelogram is the same as the height of the trapezoid, but the, the top and bottom of my parallelogram are now bottom plus top. So it, it, if I found the area of the parallelogram, bottom plus top times the height, but to get to the trapezoid, I'd need to divide it by two. So I've got my area of a triangle. And I can do action consequence things with areas of a circle. So, and I forgot to add, oh, this is the wrong one. Yeah, I won't be able to do it. So I'll skip that one. That was going to trace a very simple, here's a very simple um, action consequence for the slope of a line. The equation shows up above it. So as I drag... As I drag B, notice how the equation changes. And my question for you, is the line moving up and down or is the line moving left and right? I don't know. I don't know. And then the slope. Action consequence. Drag a slider. One thing happens. What's happening? So action consequences are nice ways to get kids to kind of see that I usually use them more as demos. Um, that's me. You might have a better way to use them, but there are a lot of them out there that you can find. Like I said, Tim has a bunch on there. Karen Camp has a bunch on there. Um, so if you can take one slider and get one movement and have one thing change and get kids to kind of really focus on that thing that's changing, I think it's a powerful learning experience for kids. So Elizabeth, did you have another thing to do? I sure do. Yes, I'll throw it back to you then. <laughs> okay. So um, I want to go back to the last thing I did, which was uh, doing checks in geometry app or trigonometry. Uh, it, the example I showed was checking for law of cosines in my third quarter project. They also have to check measurements for their constructions uh, using um, GeoGebra, um, and they would have used the law of signs. 
And um, I also like to have students, and this is something that middle school as well as elementary school can do, is uh, import a picture of a student standing next to some tall object um, or yourself standing next to some tall object, taking measurements of the student with uh, in real life in you know centimeters or inches and then measuring those in geometry the geometry app and using proportions uh, we do that also and i can show you if we have time uh, but i want to let you know okay so i have this done how do i save it and so to save what you've constructed you go to the three horizontal bars to the left of your upper left screen and save it. Um, and oftentimes I'll have students save it as shared. Um, you know, I don't want them private because if they share, or like show me the link, I can access it. So it needs to be shared. Um, it's not public, it's just shared. And so let's say this is just um, law of cosines um, and this is example. And I would save that. Now, once it's saved, a student or I could take my link. So how do you share that? You can share it um, with a link. It's really easy. And I have I actually um, have students give me their links on Canvas. And I also have them give me links on email. I actually prefer on email because on Canvas, I don't have access to the materials um, after we've closed their Canvas classroom. And if I wanna access a student's work for like a good model for the next year, um, I don't have that link. So it's kind of nice when they send it to me in an email um, and I can access that. And that is something where I have actually um, been able to, un unfortunately or fortunately, we, we high school teachers get to write letters of recommendation for our students going into college. And it's really nice to have access to some of their files uh, to see like if their vocabulary was written well. Like sometimes they have to answer questions and do they use complete sentences? And if if they did in their like geometry uh, classroom, um, in the lessons or in their projects, you have that access to look at their projects. So anyways, again, really nice to have classroom evidence of student performance, um, especially for positive feedback for them. Okay, so you would just uh, share it and um, that link could go into an LMS like Canvas or into um, an email. So that is that. Now, my next thing I wanna talk about is something that is so much fun. So if you are having a bad day or a bad year or just a bad moment, and um, you just want a little break from it all and do something fun in the math classroom, um, I would highly encourage you to have your students create um, some math artwork in GeoGebra. Now, um, it can definitely be aligned really well to the curriculum. Uh, we do this with using the AxiDraw, so students will create um, uh, different um, creations, and then they'll use the axi draw. Now, an axi draw. Let me just give you guys some examples of that. What do I have? Oh, let's go back to our. Uh, I have some pictures here. Oh, um, we have them create things in um, GeoGebra and then print it with a 3D printer. Uh, now, this doesn't have to take a lot of classroom time. They could, you know, create something on their own. Um, or during classroom work time, and then you could just print it on your own, or uh, you could have um, students, you know, start it off with a 3D printer. Um, so that's something fun. Um, I really like the AxiDraw. Um, I love using GeoGebra with the AxiDraw. Um, I want to tell you in particular this top picture. This, these are just um, pictures made with GeoGebra. I'll show you how you can use sequences uh, to create like the top and the bottom and um, as well as like, um, well, you could use polar graphs on this middle one, but I uh, printed it on the AxiDraw. Um, so it just, it's a plotter. And so it just, you can put any color you want in there and just uh, it, GeoGebra is so easy with um, 
uh, 3D printing, you just, I'll, sh I'll show you so quickly. So like, let's say you have, um, you know, something like this. Let's say you wanted to print this out. So you can go to the three bars to the upper left and um, GeoGebra, if you go to download as, there are so many different files. So you don't have to play around with conversions. Like you don't have to go to Google converting and uh, PDF to an STL, all that. Like, it's so easy. Like, I love Ge GeoGebra when we're dealing with makerspace things. So 3D printing, so easy with um, uh, with GeoGebra. Um, so anyways, there we go. So um, you can, so let's go back to the, so that's a 3D printer, just have them create something. They just download it and it's so easy to convert it into a 3D printer. Uh, AxiDraw, uh, just put it into the um, STL file and it'll print really nice. Now, so top uh, picture, I showed my college algebra students this picture, uh, this actual um, card that I made with GeoGebra using sequences. It was like really easy to make. and. Um, one of my students, and this is college algebra, so these are seniors, uh, typically don't want to be in math class. Most of them told me first day of school, I'm in this class because my mom made me take a math class. Um, when I showed them different things we would be, we could do in the class in addition to um, doing the book work, we would also be using GeoGebra. Uh, I had a student just shout out, you can do that in math? Um, and so um, it was really fun. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, whoa, like math class can be fun. So anyways, uh, Axie Drop, um, I'll show you guys how you can do some sequences if you're, if you just want to have some fun. And um, also it's a great um, connection with like a geometry unit with um, like your transformations. Uh, glass flower magnets, many people have been doing those. Uh, like if you go on Twitter, you see that a lot. But with GeoGebra, you can, you know, use polar graphs. You can also use sequences and just have fun with creations. Um, uh, yeah, my son made this in GeoGebra uh, last year. He just wanted to have a fun shirt for a math team. And so, um, you know, you can just be creative and just, he had fun with that. Um, and then here is just using sequences on a T-tall. Once you know how to do sequences and you can import, you know, pictures, um, in your GeoGebra and print it out on a T-tall or a T-shirt. Uh, so let me show you some things that my students have made. Uh, so here we go. Beautiful picture using, um, a lot of different equations, but he made it into a picture on a shirt. He used the ink sublimation printer and a heat press, beautiful. Uh, some more sequences, this is on a T-tall and uh, just some different things of uh, sequences. So once you know like how to do sequences, you can rotate, you can um, uh, do some other like uh, translations. Let me just show you how to do that. Uh, so here we go. And let's see where we are with time to see. Yeah, I have some time. So uh, I so again, this is makerspace stuff, but you can, you know, do it as easy or not you want. Um, so Axie Draw is like my go to. I'm going to go to GeoGebra. Axie Draw is really easy to use in the classroom. Uh, it's like $500. It used to be $350 or something like that, but inflation. So it's about 500 or more now for um, the like an axi draw, it's just a plotter. And it's really nice and easy to use in the classroom. And it's like it can be used like 10 minutes at a time. Um, and so it, it's nice for a project. So anyway, so I'm going to go to the three by three. And I'm just going to keep with the geometry. And um, second quarter, I tell the students how the tools interact with algebra. So like, uh, for instance, like let's go back to our log cosines. Um, if I go and I want to just clear it. Oops, I don't want to do that. Um, oh, I just cleared everything. Uh, let's go to something else. So boom, uh, do I have something here? Let's go to circles of circles. So like here is um, the algebra part and then it, I can go to tools or algebra. And you, so you can go back and forth between that. So let's go and create something. So I, again, we go to GeoGebra. I'm going to, I think I, I just keep moving on stuff. So here we go. So four by five, uh, nine, three by three geometry. 
And let's just do a sequence. And so um, let's get our axes back. So show axes and let's show our grid. Um, so I want to unclick the show grid. Oopsies, unclick it. So I want uh, major grid lines and I think we're good. So um, do I want major or minor? No, we'll just do major, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, let us um, um, start with a, um, let's do algebra. Should we do, no, let's just do a point. So let's just start with a point at one zero and two zero. And I can go back and forth on algebra. So like I, if I wanna see what this is, like what is this point, I can go to my settings and if I go to my settings and I can go to the, um, the G, uh, sorry, the graphing calculator part, and I can change the algebra descriptions to definition and value. So now I know that those are the points I want. So A is one zero, uh, B is two zero, and let's make a circle. So now instead of just creating a circle with an equation, our students in geometry would be comfortable with just doing the basic tools of geometry, circle, let's say center A going to B. And um, I'm gonna go to pointer tool. So once I'm, so I don't have to make more circles right now. I'm gonna go back to algebra and I want to create, let's say a sequence of these circles up, like let's do 10 circles. And let's say that they're going to translate by one unit. So um, let's make a point up here. So I'm gonna go and I could just, I'm actually gonna go to the tools and I think I'm gonna go to more and I think I'm gonna go to point on a circle. So let's go to more and points, point on object. And let's get this, let's say C, so that's one, one. Okay, so now our algebra lists all this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to move this over so you can see my code. And so again, if you just have, let's say 10 minutes, you're either in a transformation unit, could be fifth grade all the way up through high school. Seniors love this. Um, you can show them how to do a sequence of translate translations. So I'm going to put sequence um, and I want to um, translate. So sequence and then translate. What do I want to translate? I want to translate my circle. So my circle is labeled here C, little c. So I'm going to translate that C. Okay, so whatever that's called. Um, mine is called C. And I'm going to train, I want to translate, not, this is not point C, this is circle C. And I want to do it, um, uh, one unit at a time. And so I'm going to say comma, and then I have to do a space. That's just how uh, GeoGebra has, and I'm going to do a vector and I'm going to do an uh, iteration of I, and then I'm just going to do a space uh, vector. And I want to go from A to B. So instead of just like a unit of one, I'm going to say my vector is again, like, this is so amazing. Like such good math. Like, do you even talk about vectors with your students? So vector, uh, from A to B. So vector from A to B, how do I write that in here? I want per, ooh, vector and then capital A comma B. So I want that vector. Um, and then let's do, let's say three. We had one, two, three, one, two, three parentheses. I think I've commented too many B. One, two, three, and then comma. And then I has to go, let's say from zero to 10. <laughs> So that's really fun. So I'm going to X that out. So that's like just a translate, right? And so you could um, translate that sequence if you wanted to. So like, um, let's move that up. So let's uh, translate the sequence. So let's do a sequence. And now we're going to translate that list. So that was called L1. So that's L1. And again, this may be too advanced for you. You can, you know, come play this back again and go slower uh, vector. And let's go... Um, vector. Now let's do vertically. So let's go from A to C. So from A to C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a square here. So uh, so anyways, you can do a bunch of 
different cool, I'll show you some cool designs my students have made. So A to C, and then one, two, three, comma, I, comma, and then uh, zero, comma, 10, cool, right? Isn't that cool? Like that, like students like, you can do that in math? Yeah, you know what? That's just coding and it's understanding translations um, it's understanding like a sequence. Uh, do students have to know everything about the code? Not necessarily. I mean, you could um, really go through what is I, you know, the iterations from zero to 10, et cetera. Um, but let me show you some really cool things that, you know, oh, I think I already showed you guys. So again, uh, taking like your own design and translating it up down. I've had, you know, rotate it. You can do rotations. Um, again, like some really fun stuff. So rotating. Um, so what the sky's the limit on this, like GeoGebra is too much fun. So like all of these, you can, uh, create, um, uh, cards, you know, and we've sent our cards to our district office and they send them to students or, um, people in the community who are sick or, you know, having a baby or, um, whatever positives and negative moments. And so that's kind of cool. And then what else do we have? Um, so t-shirts, all that stuff, like this is just a fun thing for a t-shirt, et cetera. So lots of fun stuff we have been doing in, um, makerspace. So I'll go back and again, showing you guys again, uh, have fun in, in math class and do some creations. Uh, very fun. So I will bring it back to you, Steve. Oh, so let's see. I'll do one, one short thing I will show you. Favorite thing to do. This would be more of a, I've seen for middle school students and for uh, high school students in a calculus class. So I know Elizabeth has been using the geometry apps uh, on the left-hand side in this column. So when I go to the landing page, there are two columns at the bottom. I prefer, this is just my preference, I prefer to use GeoGebra Classic. So I'm going to click on GeoGebra Classic for just a moment. And then when it pops up on my screen, on the right-hand side of my screen, I'm going to select 3D Graphics. And um, my toolbar is across the top. And from the uh, left side, third button in is where the line things are located. So I'm going to choose a, um, I'm just going to choose the segment tool just for kicks. I have no idea what's going to happen. We'll see what happens here shortly. And I'm just going to go over here and, the, and now the X and Y axis are laid down in the plane. I'm going to put one point there. And I'm going to drag there, and I'm going to put one point there. And when I'm done, I'm going to put that tool away by either hitting escape on my keyboard or clicking on the little pointer arrow in the upper left-hand corner. So I, what I've done, if I tip my screen up, I've actually placed a segment in the XY plane. And that segment, I, I can do, I mean, you'll do this in probably middle school. You might like figure out what kind of a solid would you get by rotating that segment around the X axis or Y axis. And um, my toolbar is at the top. There's this toolbar in the middle. Nope, teacher technique, that one right there. It is the sixth one from the right, all the way down towards the bottom is the surface of revolution. I'm going to activate that tool. I'm just going to click on the segment and then just click and drag. And I'll pause right there for a moment. So that is, I could drag that all the way around. Uh -oh. Little, uh, little sluggish, little sluggish. Oh, I know why. I forgot to put my tool away. Number one rule of GeoGebra, put your tool away when you're done. So I could I could finish rotating that all the way around if I wanted to, and I could complete the entire uh, the entire cone. Now it's under, I've lost my orientation, so I'll click on the home button again, and I'll probably restore my orientation. So I think that might be a decent one to kind of end on. That gives us a little bit of time, five minutes or so. If there are any questions you guys have. 
and I don't know if Tim or D, if Tim or you all, if you guys, uh, any any kind of questions that have popped up, I do have this. We, I'll share this link with you, Tim. I'll, I'll put some of the links I had in a Google Doc. Sure. We, uh, Odidra and I have been answering them like nonstop as you two are presenting. It's been awesome. It's been a lot of very engaging. Very yeah, there cool. has been a lot of questions, a lot of, questions, <laughs> lot of comments, a yeah. lot of excitement. Uh, somebody's yeah. like, did I stumble into a classroom? What's happening? <laughs> that was awesome. So Tim, I dropped a Google Doc link in the private chat for you. If you could publish that and put it out to everyone else, that'd be fantastic. I will do it right now. Yep. And uh, Tim, you want to share those YouTube channels one more time? We've had a lot of interest in people following. I think you guys yeah. are going to pick up some new followers, Steve and Elizabeth and okay. Tim. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Steve's people Google following Doc right on, here. on Alice's channel can come over and follow Tim and... Yeah, so it would much, be, yeah, so it would be great, great for uh, people to uh, finish the classroom, the link that we shared at the beginning. And Tim, you could share that again. Um, in the middle part of it asks, uh, what did you, uh, so the GeoGebra classroom one, the T-C-Y-P-P-C-A-D. Um, yes. And in there, it asks on task six, there's an exit question. And you can't have a class unless you've had an exit question. So what did you learn and or enjoy about this webinar? We would love to hear your comments about that. And then the after, uh, so question six, task six. And then after that, um, uh, we just, um, I just found YouTube videos of um, different explanations of what we went over and other um other tools if we went too fast. Um, and at the bottom of the um, participant survey that uh, GeoGebra Classroom uh, has my email. So feel free to send me an email if you all want anything like the geometry um, projects, et cetera. Awesome, awesome. I know I just have a couple last words here, but uh, Deidre, anything? Uh you would like to say? Uh, no, I am just so, so excited that Iowa math teachers had the opportunity to sponsor this series of webinars. I can hardly wait till Wednesday night when we talk about graspable math, right? I believe is the next topic. And um, thank you so much, Steve and Elizabeth, for agreeing to be part of this. Uh, awesome stuff. And the links will be housed. I think Tim's going to put it in the chat at um, the website, iowamath.org iowamath.org thank you so much Deidre for organizing this and for oh, Iowa it's all Math Tim. for sponsoring we just paid for this it. Tim amazing <laughs> organization thank you oh it's a pleasure and a pleasure and honor to work with all of you it really it really is cool thank you for coming here Steve I know it's way past your bedtime thank you <laughs> so it is um, way past my bedtime man it is I know this is uh yeah well, people all over the world from Mongolia Mexico we've had a lot of people just uh showing some geogebra love here tonight uh, it's been really cool. Um, and thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Um, just uh, this is part one of a four part series. Part two is coming up Wednesday night where we're going to explore uh, graspable math right uh, right here. Let me just see if I can get this uh, thumbnail up here. There it is. Uh, if you're teaching algebra with students and, um, you know, your students are kind of struggling here, then this is the um, this is the one for you right here. Uh, graspable math. Uh, it's an, it's a great app. There's actually GeoGebra built in there too. So you'll see how GeoGebra and graspable math actually work along uh, really well. Um, Susan Carricker and I will be presenting uh, two nights from now. That's Wednesday night from nine to 11 Eastern. I know it's late for us on the East coast, but you know, people on the West coast always get the bums rush where it's like, oh, so early, it's late, but we're trying to get as many people in America here. And also in the, you know, in the, in the Asian countries, it's morning over there now. So those people watching there. So um, thank you so much for the comments, for the questions. Um, keep them coming. And, um, and we can rewatch it any time, right, Tim? It, it's not yeah, like a... If you're, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, wherever you're finding it, uh, Alice Keeler's Twitter Periscope, the links will always be there. This is not like a Zoom or Google Meet where there's a recording afterwards. Wait, no, it's these links are live. They're good now. They're good forever. So um, Share thanks again, friends. everybody, for joining us. And thank you again to the Iowa Council of Teachers of Mathematics for sponsoring us. Thank you so much, Steve. So much, Elizabeth. You guys were awesome. You rocked. We'll see you back here. I'll see you Wednesday, Wednesday Tim. Night. All right. Wednesday. Thank you. All right. Have a great night.